dire consequences of the worst natural disaster in our nation's history. Mr. Obama says that he's listening to experts, and some of them join us right here, right now. Meet Diane Wilson. She's a shrimper who dramatically poured oil over herself during recent Senate hearings on the show. She was arrested for that. Uh, that's her in the upper left. David Kearns, or is it Kearns or Kearns? Kearns. Kearns. David Kearns. David Kearns. Kearns. Uh, okay, David, uh, the self-K-R-N-S, right. <laughs> the self-confessed VP vigilante, whose performance art tells his own story about the company's liability. David Carmardell, Carmardell is just as angry, uh, but he's more mainstream. David's mayor of beleaguered Grand Isle, Louisiana, and he joins us along with Leota Vladsacker, Grand Isle Councilwoman, while Keith Jones uh, is the dad of Gordon Jones, one of the 11 workers killed on board the Deepwater Horizon when the giant rig uh, blew up almost eight weeks ago. Uh, Diane, uh, what did you hope to accomplish in your pouring oil over yourself before the Senate? Uh, did you bring attention to the cause? To your, what was that about? Uh, well, I, I really didn't know what I was going to accomplish with it. I just knew uh, I'd been sitting back at home in Cedar, Texas, and I've been hearing about the oil spill. And matter of fact, I've been watching the oil and chemical and uh, refineries out there for the last 20 years. I've been an environmental activist in, in addition to being a shrimper, and I was curious and so I was going to come to Washington. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. And about 10 o'clock the night before, I decided I was going to get some oil. And I was going to sit into the Energy and Natural Resource Committee. And I was going to wait until Senator uh, Lisa Murkowski from uh, uh, Alaska came through. And I was going to pour oil all over myself because she was really bugging me. But you're facing a year in jail now. Uh, that is true, and quite frankly, I do not care. I think the situation out there really deserves some kind of hard type of action. Mayor Camardell, uh, how's Grand Isle faring? Are you keeping it along? Yes, the uh, uh, councilwoman, uh, the other glass back on the side of me, um, you can see the view behind me. Um, what we're doing is we're getting ready to start putting our boards tomorrow uh, so we can put them across the five passes that we went to testify. In, in Congress uh, during the week and make sure that uh, we can come in and plug up these five passes to stop the oil from coming in to the back side of the aisle. Mayor, how many uh, applicants do you have waiting for the $5,000 check, the first $5,000 check from BP? Well, we opened the doors right away to get BP in the community center. We have about 1,500 residents, so we had applicants from the neighboring parishes that came in, uh, and we're still some of the residents are still waiting on some of the money to $5,000. So every day they, they call us and they didn't receive too much of the money. But we are pushing BP to make sure we pay these people. I, I just want to go to Keith Jones. I want to get everybody in before we run out of time. Our condolences about your, your, your son, Gordon, Keith. But one of the things we as lawyers uh, are focused on right now is that uh, there is a cap on the amount of money you can recover for your son's tragic death on board that rig. Uh, you cannot get punitive damages, you cannot get pain and suffering. All you really can get, as I understand the law, which has been on the books since 1920, is the compensatory damages, the money he would have made during his lifetime, uh, less taxes, plus interest. That must infuriate. Uh, it does, but that's why we're trying to do something about it. My son and I both happen to be lawyers, and. Uh, that's Gordon's older brother, and we realize how unfair the death in the high seas act is. But we also know that Congress can do something about it, and they can do something about it and make it affect uh, these uh, families, these 11 victims. So that's exactly what we're trying to do in Congress now. And David Kearns, what exactly? Do you want to boycott? Do you want everyone to boycott all of BP? Absolutely. Now, what about, the, what about the fact that the franchise I'm not a, I'm not a vigilante. Okay, the little guy that owns the BP gas station. Yes. What yes, about the, the human shield that BP is using? The human shield that... Uh, interesting characterization. Yeah, listen. They can, they can turn around and build BP because that's really who's at fault here. Um, don't blame people for, for, you know, being angry at a product 
that is notorious, and this is the second time they've been notorious. Texas City, the first time. You're throwing um, your garbage on right. Your, you're throwing their, your garbage onto their property. Isn't that vigilante? Yes. That's hardly, hardly a violent act in vigilante. I don't and say I picked it up. If you I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't say it's okay. at all. Well, vigilante is in your race. It might be. I understand your race. Uh, well, you know, as a sailor, you understand. I and somebody who spent some time in, in Florida, and you know, paper plates and, and some garbage that was eventually picked up. These, these aren't tools of someone who's, who's meaning anyone any harm. But we have a right to speak out about what's going on. And most of us can't go down to our corporate offices of BP. So it leaves a human shield in our path. And and they they should file for that money just as the shrimpers. Just as the fishermen, they should turn right around. They have the documentation for how much money they've lost since April 20th. And that is a legitimate claim. And I, that's I, what I, I agree with said. Was, I, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mayor, can you ask the councilwoman, uh, uh, she can hear me, uh, what is the worst thing that's happened to your town? From your heart, tell me, what, what's the worst about this awful situation? Well, we, we don't appreciate y'all coming on to our beach. But right now we are facing uh, just hundreds of people coming in that know nothing about our town and it has our residents a little antsy and we're concerned about that so we're trying to, to put a lid on that and try to find out who's coming in so that we can keep track of these people and, and keep them out of our neighborhood. Right. That's, our, that's our biggest concern right now. Keep Grand Isle alive. We'll count on you guys. Thank you all and good luck to you. And I, I tell you, Diane Wilson, we uh, will get a defense fund for you uh, to face those criminal charges. Coming up, when was the last time you heard any news about the facts and circumstances concerning Michael J. 